Help support AMTV by becoming a patron, an AMTV staff member, and following us over on Twitter. Hi there guys, it's Adam Martin here, and today I'm going to talk to you about Freeview. So I'm sure many UK viewers will already know about Freeview, but actually Australians and New Zealanders will as well. But for anyone who doesn't, Freeview is a service here in the UK. It forms the bulk of live television nowadays. It was launched in 2002 and it, uh, currently it's a joint venture between some of the biggest players in UK broadcasting, such as the BBC, ITV, Channel 4, Sky, etc. So when this launched in 2002, it was taking over the services from ITV Digital, which was an absolute failure in itself that uh, that basically never got off the ground. That's a whole story in itself. And yes, I am thinking of making a documentary on it one day. A lot of you asked me and it will happen one day. Just give me let, me, let me find the right time. But basically Freeview from 2002 onwards, via the use of a TV aerial, gave people several channels to watch as it implies for free. Now, yes, obviously there are some caveats to that. Obviously, the BBC and its corresponding channels are funded by the license fee. Obviously, there is a TV license to, to pay for that. But the rest of the channels, you know, like the advertising ones, ITV, Channel 4, etc., and all the various commercial offshoots are completely free to watch. It actually, I think, broke a lot of ground because before then, you know, in terms of free-to-view channels, you were mainly stuck with the, the main terrestrial ones. So literally, it expanded people's options from, say, three, four, or five channels to potentially, you know, a hundred or even more channels. But as time's gone on, the, the debate about Freeview is is always up in the air. You know, it's a very, it's a relatively old model now, you know, over 20 years old. The landscape of broadcasting has changed so much in terms of online streaming, everything moving towards a more on-demand style service rather than live TV watching. There was an interesting thing I found online from a website called UKFree.TV, which proclaims that Freeview will not survive another 16 years, which makes me think this was uh, made in 2020 because the date it gives is 2036, appropriately the 100th anniversary of television here in the UK itself. And here's some reasons. So it goes through some of the major players, so like the BBC, for example. It claims the BBC is not going to make it to the end of 2036 in its current form. There are two possible routes ahead, both of which will mean the end of Freeview. The BBC could become a subscription service, which would require the content it produces to be unwatchable to those who don't pay and require a move to a pay iPlayer. Or the second possibility is that it will become a Guardian-like, as in the newspaper, organisation, where the provision of video and audio is paid for by willing supporters, but the rest can access it with, uh, with adverts or a guilty conscience. However, such a system is unlikely to be able to support the ongoing cost of old-style broadcasting. I think the BBC does hold the major hand in like the, f the future of Freeview. It was one of the founders. It's one of the biggest like shareholders, one of the biggest players in it. And we do know there's a lot of change happening to the BBC. We know that the license fee in its current form uh, is ending in 2027. And I I'm assuming if we still have a Tory government by then, that they're going to go forward with this plan of basically scrapping the license fee as was. Uh, but they haven't, they still haven't announced what they would replace it with. Now, I've said on multiple occasions, on multiple videos on this channel, I'm not against the license fee in the sense that, you know, I don't think the BBC should have one. I do think the current model of license fee could be adapted or remodeled or made more accessible to more people. But again, the future of that is, is up in the air. We've still got a few more years until 2027. I'd like to think the BBC won't move to a subscription-based service. I mean, that's not what the, the heart of the corporation is about. You know, it's a public service broadcaster. It should be accessible to as many people as possible. And you would hope, you would sincerely hope whoever makes that call further down the line, no matter what political party they align with, they recognise that 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 public service element has been such a crucial part of the BBC's history this past 100 years and you know long may it continue it then talks about the public service ad companies. So one of the successes of Freeview is that ITV, Channel 4 and Channel 5 continue to produce and provide ongoing quantities of free-to-air, high-quality video content, meaning news, drama, soaps, documentaries that get shown on the top page of the EPG, the electronic programming guide. So those are the main channels that get shown first, you know, the main five. It says the problem for Freeview here is that it's unlikely that the economic conditions that makes these channels a public service can continue in the longer term. Dwindling audiences for peak time shows makes the cost per viewer rise. I mean, it's fair to say in terms of raw numbers, viewership has been declining over the past 10 
definitely 10 years, you know, with the move to online or catch up services. But I'd always, you know, I say this when it comes to Doctor Who and all that sort of stuff, but I think low overnight viewing figures don't necessarily mean the death of a show or like bad health of a show. Catch up figures are important. There are other ways these companies make advertising, not, just, you know, from merchandise alone, say from sales on physical media or even online sales. You know, they're also selling these programs potentially to other countries around the world. So, yes, I acknowledge that viewership for like live viewing is going down and has been going down for the last 10 years. But I'd argue it doesn't automatically signal like the death knell, if that makes sense. But it's saying that uh, it will reach a point where the expensive but little watch shows will disappear. I guess because they're too expensive. Ofcom will be faced to pick from three to five being demoted in the EPG or let the channel show what they want. And they reckon that it will just dwindle to best of repeats of their old content. I'm not against best of repeats of older programs. But, you know, if, if I think if your channel's not exclusively built around that, then it does become a little stale. So, but yeah, cost of making programs is 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 a problem. I know friends who work in the TV industry who say new shows, you know, might have great pitch ideas, but they just aren't getting commissioned because companies either don't have or aren't willing to commit the money to making it happen, unfortunately. Regarding the other ad-related channels, it's it says, uh, with it being just standard ad-funded ones, they show almost... They show content that's almost entirely been shown elsewhere first. It may be on another channel, including the BBC, or an online service or TV in the USA. That's right, there are a lot of channels that show American programming. Most of them generate a small amount of new material, like Abandoned Engineering on Yesterday or Taskmaster on Dave to provide a shine to the channel, which would otherwise be repeats of repeats of repeats. The challenge here is that it's far more fun to watch these old shows without adverts on Netflix or BritBox, so there will come a time where these channels have so few viewers it makes them uneconomical to run. I understand that point of argument, but again, you know, with Netflix or BritBox, you are still paying monthly for a subscription and again like once you get the free view box as the name implies those channels are free to watch and you know you can still record programs so these old say these old programs maybe say it's an old sitcom or an old drama you can technically watch them without adverts what you do is you record it and then you go back and you fast forward the adverts but i also get the idea that freeview is primarily used nowadays or used a lot nowadays for people who are in that habit still of watching live television so i understand that point of view but i mean I'd much rather either record or even watch a show with adverts rather than necessarily pay a subscription to watch it. But again, that's my personal preference. I guess that's more of a subjective thing depending on the audience member. It also talks about shopping channels because let's face it, shopping channels are everywhere on Freeview. There are tons of them. And it makes the argument that the concept of shopping channels versus online shopping is hard to sustain in the long term. The interactive elements of online shopping will make the shopping channels on TV redundant in the short term. I've got to be honest, this is probably the one I agree with the most. I'm actually amazed that shopping channels on TV are actually still like a major thing and are still airing on you know, on Freeview in several forms like QVC and all that. I understand maybe like in the late 80s, early 90s when they first came about, maybe where they had a use or maybe they were exciting and interesting. But nowadays, as as it says, especially with online shopping, you know, you don't even have to go and sit at your computer. You can have the TV on and do your online shopping from your phone. You know, it just makes the whole idea of like a television shopping channel a bit redundant. So to be honest, if anything's going to go from Freeview first, I would assume and maybe even hope that it's the shopping channels. It also, uh, I guess, makes the case for smart TV. You know how that the uh, with with things like Chromecast, Android TV, Amazon Alexa, fewer TVs are actually being plugged into a TV aerial. The concept of the aerial is not as prevalent as it once was. So when you have these when you have these TV things like Android TV and stuff where you can access all these channels via that and rather an aerial, you know you don't need to get a free view box necessarily. So th there's several things. I actually find the article quite interesting to read. You know, it also talks about Freeview HD for everyone and the various multiplex licenses and when they run to, etc. So if you, you know if you're interested, it's ukfree.tv. If you type that in and just you know will Freeview end or something, I'm sure it'll pop up. It makes an interesting read. But you know, personally, I don't want Freeview to end. And I've got to admit, I don't use Freeview that much myself. You know, I, I rarely watch television live these days. I rarely use, you know, Freeview in general. I did when I was a lot younger. And I just think it, it remains sort of like the BBC as a whole, in my opinion. It sort of remains that lifeline to those who maybe aren't as savvy with the new, well, like with the new smart tech, think like the older generations, who are also the generations who are more likely to watch, you know, live television or to access Freeview and stuff like that. But again, I think that's the key thing. It's accessibility. Freeview has an accessibility in some regards that subscription services like Netflix, BritBox, Disney Plus and all that, they don't necessarily have that. 
And I think, especially since some of the main channels on Freeview are more like public service-y kind of broadcasters, that accessibility needs to remain. This sort of content, this high quality content needs to be available to audiences as and when they choose. And they might choose not to watch it. And you know, that's, you know, that's the audience choice. That's a subjective choice, whether they want to watch these programs or not. But I think trying to make these accessible as possible is an absolute paramount objective for Freeview. And let's face it, Freeview's never necessarily go, go Freeview itself is not gonna go to like a subscription model because then that just makes the name redundant, doesn't it? The whole point of Freeview was that it was giving you all these channels, channels you were familiar with and brand new channels for, for no extra cost apart from, you know, buying the box, setting it up and obviously paying the license fee. But yeah, if they ever tried to go for a subscription model, the whole Freeview concept would be redundant. So the whole, you know, that question, is Freeview gonna go by the, say, 2036, or say in the next 10, 15 years? I, I wouldn't rule out the possibility, unfortunately. I think there is a very real chance that it could, just because, as the article mentions, various, you know, there's economic factors that are coming into play here. There's obviously political things going on behind the scenes as well, particularly with targets aimed at the BBC, and just how the broadcasting landscape will change. I mean, you know, in the year 2023, who thought 20 years ago, back in like, you know, 2002, 2003, who ever thought we'd, we'd consume a lot of our content now via these, these streaming sites over the internet? You know, most of us didn't even have a good or stable internet connection 20 years ago. So, you know, in another 10, 15, 20 years, the broadcasting landscape could be immeasurably changed again. And will Freeview have a place? Well, that remains to be seen. I, I hope it does. I hope they find a way to keep it going, even if it's in a reduced form, you know, scrap the shopping channels, scrap a lot of the plus one stuff, I don't know, but I do, I would honestly argue that Freeview has a place, mainly for that accessibility front going forward in UK broadcasting, but like with anything, nothing's irreplaceable, and Freeview, sadly, is not excluded from that list. But that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I just wanted to touch on the idea of Freeview, its future, and what may lay ahead for it. But please let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know down below. Do you think Freeview is going to last for another 10, 15 years? Or do you think it's going to bite the dust? And let me know, do you still use Freeview in any way? You know, do you still watch stuff? Do you still access some of the channels and all that sort of stuff? Let me know in the comments down below. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it as well. Really does help us out and we do appreciate it. And subscribe to us here on the main channel as well because we'd love to have you aboard. I've been Adam Martin from AMTV. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Thank you to our patrons for helping to support the show and a special thank you to Macra, Hooks Media, Ben Freeman, Ethan Carberry-Holt, The Broken Kit Sumanoid, Globe of Reviews, Derek Chambers, Sean Nock, DSTV New Zealand, and Dord Khan, our AMTV staff members.